next talk is by Michael Schwartz. Um, immune checkpoint blockade to fight against Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Switch. Hi, good morning. And also, I don't belong to the Tel Aviv University. I met Eshel Ben Yaakov when, many years ago when he came to my lab as a physicist and asked me to do some experiment in collaboration here, in connection to the brain. And I thought, wow, this is so far from me. But I was amazed by his eye-driven, eye-curiosity and attempt to simplify. <laughs> attempt to simplify biolog biological question. And what I'm going to show you today, that if the, the brain is complex, the immune system is as complex, and these two systems talk so nicely that they simplify the brain and simplify the brain needs. So the claim of fame of my laboratory is the crosstalk between the brain and the immune system. And as a matter of fact, we were the first with eye penalty at the beginning, suggesting that the immune system really protect the brain and maintain the brain and help the brain to shape it. It doesn't mean that it affects our intelligence, no mean, but it affects our ability to make the best out of our brain. So we do know that there is continuous uh, surveillance of the body by the immune system, and for decades it was thought that the brain is excluded from this surveillance uh, because mainly the blood-brain barrier. But we have to remember, do we have a pointer? No pointer. So I'll use my... So for decades, it was believed that the brain is excluded. However, between the brain and the circulation, there is additional barrier that we tend to ignore and it was introduced uh, in the first lecture that the brain is the highest consumer of oxygen. So at the barrier of, this br of the brain, which is the blood CSF barrier, great, now I used to, <laughs> this is great. Yeah, I will coordinate. So uh, there is uh, one type of barrier between the brain and the circulation, which is known as the blood CSF barrier which exists in the roof of the four ventricles. And this barrier is very interesting because the blood vessels are fenestrated and the barrier is not endothelial barrier, but epithelial barrier. Uh, it was considered as a barrier where the CSF is being formed. And what I'm going to show you that this is the official nexus between the brain and the circulation. And it's really a, a pivotal barrier for our lifelong maintenance of the brain. So the old dogma uh, thought that after under, under any stressful condition, the immune cells will go to any of the body tissue, but the brain is excluded. My laboratory, almost 20 years ago, asked a very simple question. How come the tissue that is non-displaceable uh, and it's so precious has given up the opportunity to be assisted by the immune system? So uh, our paradigm shift started in 1998 and 1999, and what I'm going to show you how this paradigm shift brought us to the idea at these days that we can rejuvenate the immune system as a way of treating the brain. So we heard in earlier on this morning that we can rejuvenate the brain by oxygen, and what I'm going to show you, I, I trust the oxygen, trust everything, but we don't have to treat the brain, we have to treat the immune system. So uh, in 1999 and 1998, we suggested for the first time that macrophages and T cells facilitate brain repair. At that time, it was observed, but we didn't know what is the role of the macrophages and what is the role of T cell and what is the relationship with the myeloid cells of the brain. In addition, a couple of years later, sitting with my graduate student, who is now a professor in Virginia, we saw that we don't have any limitation of T cell and macrophages in, or monocytes in, in the circulation. Nevertheless, we never repair completely the CNS. So we thought that maybe the immune system has much more a robust role in the brain. And that was when we discovered that even simple processes of making new neurons in the brain are the neural stem cells in the brain, which we have in two major locations, the hippocampus and the olfactory, is dependent on the immune system. 
In other words, when you place animal in enriched environment, physical activity, good social activity, like it's recommended to human being, there's increased neurogenesis. In immune compromised animal, even if the brain is completely healthy, there will be reduction in neurogenesis and they will not benefit the enriched environment. In other words, if the immune system is compromised, no matter how we'll do exercises and nutrition, it will not be as effective as when the immune system is effective. Subsequently, we found that it's also cognition and we characterize what type of T-cell that we need for this supporting the brain from formation of new neurons and cognition. And we found, as we originally discovered, that it's T-cell that recognize brain antigen. In other words, autoimmune T-cell, which came as a big surprise, but we'll get into it. So we were puzzled for many years, uh, how can the T-cell support the brain where we, are, we know that they are completely excluded from the brain? And how can macrophages enter to the CNS territory while without breaking the blood-brain barrier? So it took us almost two years, uh, 10 years, to decipher these two questions. And finally, in 2013, which brought us to the Alzheimer, and I'll show you in a few minutes, we discovered that even if the injury to the CNS is in the spinal cord, the macrophages that facilitate repair don't enter through because of breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. We found that they can enter either through the adjacent leptomeninges, but those that resolve the local inflammation, which occur after injury, are coming from the ventricles, from the two blood cells of barrier which exist in the lateral ventricles, in the brain, the third, and the third. So those of you who are not anatomists, just to tell you that the entry of macrophages, they are in the circulation, they are monocytes, but enter of monocytes that give rise locally to anti-inflammatory macrophages can occur without breakdown of the blood-brain barrier, and they are entering through the epithelial barrier. This was very puzzling for us. We understood lately what is the advantage of this entry. However, uh, it is, was puzzling because the injury is here and they are entering from a remote site. So we further went to see what is unique of this barrier. So the barrier looked like there are numerous blood vessels there. And even if you perfuse the animal very extensively, you see T cell outside the blood vessel. So basically, we found them in the stroma of, the, of this barrier. Here is the CSF, this is the barrier. So basically, we envision that maybe following injury or any other pathology will get into Alzheimer. There are a, 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 a cytokines such as TNF alpha, IL 1 beta, all of those that are now associated with injury. So the epithelial barrier facing the CSF can sense the signaling from the brain there is a pathology. And we found that the T cells are sitting there. So we envisioned that, that maybe activation of this gateway for trafficking can occur by signaling coming from the two sides. So we characterized the T cells that sit in this barrier, and we found that most of them are memory T cells. We did robust RNA sequencing of what they recognize. And overall, what we found that the T cells that sit in this gateway are autoimmune T cells, which we call them the gatekeeper of the brain. So how can they activate the, the the barrier. So by culturing the cells and to expose them to various cytokines that we thought that are coming as a danger from the site of injury and from the T cell, to make a long story short, we found that in order to activate this gateway to allow trafficking of immune cells, we need signaling coming from the, the brain, such as TNF alpha, and the most important, the gatekeeper of the brain is interferon gamma. Excited by this, we thought, wow, maybe. This, the active of this, activity of this gateway is holding the key for aging and for neurodegenerative diseases. So in aging, uh, we found that there is a dramatic loss of interferon gamma when animal age from 12 months to 18 months, which equivalent middle age in human being to sound like 80, 80 years old. We found that it is associated with reduced expression of trafficking molecule. When we did robust RNA sequencing of aged tissue from young, from aged animal, so we took 11 tissue, lungs, kidney, separated this barrier, the epithelial barrier from the brain, and we compared it to 11 young animal, we found that aging is associated with increased signaling of one protein, which is interferon beta. Interferon beta is anti-inflammatory, it's antiviral response. 
We make sure that it's not because our colony is a contaminated virus. We got aged mice from several centers in the world. And what we found that aging is associated with elevation interferon beta and reduction to film gamma. Before we published our paper in Science, there was a paper in Science a couple of months before us showing that interferon beta and interferon gamma have mutual reverse relationship. So we thought maybe this is responsible for shutting off the communication. We got section from human, age human, that died not, that donated the brain for research. They didn't die out of neurological disease, and we found the same signature. Interferon beta is going up in human, going up in um, uh, mice. Young human, young mice don't express it. To make sure that this is the, uh, affecting the brain function, we neutralized the interferon beta by injecting antibody into the CSF, and we restore activity of the gateway, and we restore cognition. So this is how we took the mice, big cohort of mice, scored them first for those that lost cognition, which is about 70%, like in human. We divided them into two groups. One group received placebo antibody, and the other, the interferon beta. We restore cognition, and we store neurogenesis. Based on this, uh, we also checked the microglia, but the most important, we thought maybe this is the key in Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and we, uh, we don't argue that in Alzheimer's there are many processes that go away. We know that there are beta amyloid, uh, there, um, Ilana mentioned it, there is a tau pathology, there is many processes, you name it. It's aging, it's pathology, everything. But there is also no, a process of neuroinflammation. We know from the literature that there were numerous attempts to treat Alzheimer's with anti-inflammatory drug, all fall short. And the last clinical trial was 2008, and then, then it, when they failed, they cited our work and said, maybe we have to boost immunity rather than suppress immunity. In addition, we know from 2006 onwards, several work, including ours, but numerous other work, have already demonstrated that in order to fight Alzheimer, you need to bring macrophages into the site of pathology. And these macrophages have a wide range of activity, including uh, production, of, production of trophic factor and anti-inflammatory. So based on this, we decided to see whether the gateway in Alzheimer's is a suppress. So we, t we checked, uh, this is the five ex-fad mice. These are my transgenic mice that express five human mutation of Alzheimer's, three A beta and two presenilin. So at any given time that we checked the animal relative to wild type control, we saw that we lost expression of trafficking molecule by the choroid plexus, uh, which is the epithelial barrier, in uh, um, Alzheimer's relative to wild type mice. So we thought, let's see uh, in human. We found we got human section and the same phenomena, the same cytokine uh, that is uh, the same adhesion molecule that is needed for trafficking across this barrier was lost in human, young people, old people, and Alzheimer's, which is like accelerated aging. What we found that the loss of trafficking molecule was accompanied with a loss of interferon gamma which based on our results saw that this is the missing link because we need availability of interferon gamma at this gateway. Now, uh, the, uh, this, our work was reproduced lately by another group in the States. They used different mutation of Alzheimer's and found the same phenomena. They are losing interferon gamma and losing the trafficking molecule. Excited by that, we thought, how can we boost interferon gamma? There are four ways to boost interferon gamma, either active vaccination or passive vaccination, provided that you know the antigen, or going the other way around, reduce immune suppression, because the immune system is under tight control. So what we did, we bred our mice, uh, uh, the Alzheimer mice, with mice that we got from a group in the States that allow you to deplete selectively only suppressor cells. All our immune system is built on a tight regulation activity and suppressor activity. So we bred the mice, we got now Alzheimer mice where we can deplete only the suppressor cells. In this mice, you can deplete only once because then it rebound and we need it to, that it will rebound. So we found that indeed immediately we lost the suppressor cells, but right after, 
after a week, they start to rebound. To make a long story short, when we reduce the suppressor cells, we reverse the activity of the gateway. All the trafficking molecules that we need for entry of macrophages to the brain, I'm finishing. All the, the uh, trafficking molecules that we need went up. Uh, we found that we are, uh, there is a loss of gliosis, which is terrible to the brain. There is reduction in plaque formation, both in the cortex and in the hippocampus. And there is a, was complete restoration of cognition measured by Morris Watermeyer. So based on the end, we found recruitment of immune cells around the plaque. Now we know from the literature in cancer and immun immunotherapy that instead of reducing suppressor cells, we can reduce suppressor pathway, which are called immune checkpoint. So we, I was sitting with my student and told them, let's find a way to reduce suppression and not by manipulating the cells, but manipulating what express on the cells. So the most, the most successful therapy for cancer now is the immune checkpoint blockade, which is directed to PD-1. PD-1 is a receptor which is expressed by T cell, and PDL one is the, the ligand. Now, because this ligand can be expressed by epithelial cells and by regulatory T cells and by antigen presenting cells, we thought that this is the best for us. Now, needless to say that this is approved for a, by FDA. So we decided to adapt this approach. We gave it to the mice. We found that as a result of the treatment, we restore interferon gamma activity in the whole plexus. RNA sequencing showed that it restored a signaling. We found that we indeed boost a, a, a recruitment of macrophages to the brain. We found that these macrophages completely different activity than the microglia. We found that if we block them with anti-interferon gamma, we lost the effect. That means that the drug that we gave to the mice is working through interferon gamma. We restore cogn cognition since we did this with, since the paper was published two months ago. Uh, we found, uh, we repeated the work. Uh, we did it in very st uh, advanced stage of the disease when the animal are completely lost cognition, completely full of uh, plaques. We reversed the loss of cognition. We now have it in male and female in early stages. So this is just to show you how robust is the plaque. These are the plaques in the brain in the placebo group, which received the, the control antibody. Uh, two months after we started the treatment, and the plaques were almost gone. Remember, our treatment is not directed to the brain. It doesn't reach the brain. It treats treat only the immune system. It's not directed to the plaques. Nevertheless, it robustly affects the plaques. This is the quantification, and this is the summary of what we are proposing. We are proposing that our tre systemic treatment of the immune system in which we revitalize the immune system. It's a treatment used for cancer. Uh, in the cancer is CD8 positive cells. We need CD4. Both are revitalized by the treatment. We are activating the gateway to the brain, allow in a selective way entry of the immune cells. The immune cells get into the brain. They can do numerous activity. We know now that they can restore the immunological balance. We are currently checking whether it does protect a survival neuron. It affects synaptic plasticity, which we know. And this is the cartoon that emphasizes what we are saying. In line with whatever is known in the literature, we completely agree that there is local inflammation. We need to bring anti-inflammatory cells to this, uh, to this area. However, they cannot pass the gateway. And to pass the gateway, we need to activate this gateway with pro-inflammatory cells rather anti-inflammatory. Giving systemic anti-inflammatory is like treating frostbite with ice. And this is the, the work was heavily supported by the European Commission and by um, ISF and, and any, uh, many other grants. None of them are private money. And these are graduate students that did work. Collaboration RNISEC was done in tight collaboration with Ido Amit at the Weizmann Institute. With whom I have two graduate students. Uh, part of the group, the, the science work was done with a group in Stanford, and we have other collaborators. And these are past collaborators. Thank you. Thank you. Time for a question or two. Yes. function of 
from just oxygenation that probably also takes place once, the, once you open the gate? I don't think that there is any discrimination because the blood brain, we are not activating the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier should be sealed under all conditions. We checked in our paper because that's what one of the questions that the referee asked us. Now, what we are doing, we are not opening the gate. We are activating immunological activity of the gate to allow trafficking immune cells. They are not swimming the immune cells. They are crawling. They need a chemokine. They need cell adhesion molecule. So uh, if uh, by... Uh, oxygenation, you can activate the gateway. This is as good as this one, and it may be the oxygenation activate the gateway. I, I wanted to ask the, the, the fair, after the first lecture whether the, it's mediated by the immune system, and I believe that by the oxygenation you are activating the gateway either directly or indirectly by the immune system. The immune macrophages can affect angiogenesis, they can affect many things. So it has to be tested, and I will be more than happy to collaborate. Around, right? but, uh, it could also be the other way oh. around, that even if the gate is transiently open, and even if it passes only microphages, maybe the macrophages themselves can carry Ah, the macrophages are doing it, and it's only transiently open. So at the end of the day, the treatment, we, now there are numerous companies that want to, uh, to embark on it. But based on our t results, the treatment, the regimen, and everything for Alt Alzheimer with the anti-PD-1, which is approved for FDA, by FDA, will not be the same. Because we need to tangently activate and then allow immune cells to enter and then another. So it should be with interval. So it's, I'm more than welcome if there is any tr other treatment that will do it. But the beauty, these are two complicated systems that talk to each other in a simplified way. Okay, I'm sorry, we, we have to go on because we're running. Okay, the next uh, talk is by Roy Dutch. Um,